need these, I guess. Oh. Hey, we're live. I just realized we were live. I saw the clock ticking. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Great to see everybody. Welcome. Hey, Anita, how are you doing? I am fantastic, Melanie. Good to be here. It truly is the end of the year. It's like last day, last business day. I know, I know. And you know, I, if you're like everybody else, people are, are analyzing, what did I do this year? What did I accomplish this year? What's still on my list? I know I was going through and making, you know, my goals for 2023 and saying, okay, what didn't I get done last year that I want to do this year? And that's one of the reasons why we're here today, right? Is I, I got to start off with just telling this quick story of our friend, Veronica. So Veronica called and she said, I am so tired of having my book on my list of things to do and my friends telling me, oh yeah, we heard it. It's been how many years now mm -hmm, that you've been talking about your book? Womp, womp. You're, are you yeah. ever going to get it done? She goes, I am so tired of that. She said, I am getting it done. So on December 15th, she signed up, she got our program and she's already had two publishing meetings with us and she feels like a rock star. She's like, I'm telling everybody it's getting done. Cancel my trip to Hawaii. Cancel my vacations. I am going and just all in and writing this book and getting it done. And really, her book is going to be launching probably the first quarter of this year. And she just feels like a rock star. I just can't tell you the shift in her energy because she knows she took action to get her book done. And how many other wow. people are like that that we've talked to that are just... They keep saying on the fence and, you know, it's their dream to get it done, but it's that taking action. Yeah, people do it all year round. This is the time when people say the whole, you know, New Year's resolution, I promise I'm going to get my book done next yeah. year. And life gets in the way. Business gets in the way. We get that. But you have to make a commitment. And we are here to help you get on the right track, right? So that you're not that person like the little boy who cries wolf <laughs> every year who says, I'm going to write my book next year, next year, next year. And it never happens. So that's why you want to get ready right now to take some notes. Melanie yeah. and I are super excited to share some really usable information with you today. Uh, of course, we should introduce ourselves. We are with Elite Online Publishing. I'm Anita Henderson, known as the Book Whisperer. So I'm the words person, right? I am here to help guide our authors to create amazing written content so that their book uh, manuscript is engaging, it's entertaining, it's inspirational, it's informational, and that it has the impact on readers that you expect. And it helps you as the author get to accomplish the goals you have for actually writing the book. Super excited to be joined by publishing uh, strategist extraordinaire, Melanie Johnson. Introduce yourself. Yes. And we're, we're going to give you tons of content today. We're here to help you get over that hurdle and get that book written. And we have new things. This is what we eat, sleep, and drink. So we're trying to stay on top of everything that's going on in book writing, book marketing, book publishing. And yes, I'm Melanie Johnson. We started this company about almost eight years ago now. Um, I used to own a couple TV stations as my background. I was a news anchor at one time, Miss Michigan at one time. Um, so I'm really in tune with marketing, promotion, and really the reason for writing your book besides your book, right? There's these other reasons go around it. And then my business partner who is not here today, she is under the weather. We're not sure if she has COVID or she has the flu, Jen Foster. Um, she is a website designer is how she started out. And she had a chain of retail uh, kiosks. And I want to say hi to Wes. Thank you, Wes, for joining us. Great to see you. Happy New Year. And Wes is a tremendous author. He has several books out. We want to give him a shout out. Go check out uh, Wes's books um, on Amazon. So let's kind of dive in here. I want to say, you know, again, a lot of people have been on the fence. It's something they've been thinking about becoming an author. And, you know, becoming a best selling author can change your life. Um, as I talked about with Veronica, um, just getting going started, getting started and knowing she's going to publish this book. So it really can change the 
inner workings of you as a person. You just stand a little taller. You feel a little prouder. You know that you're helping the world with your content. And that's what we're here for. We're here to help you self-publish. We're a concierge service. We have marketing and we're going to get a high touch, high impact experience with us. And that's what you're going to get today when we go through some things. So um, I want to start with, oh, he says no surname. He wants me to... Olinsky is how we say Wes, right? <laughs> so, um, okay. So anyways, let's get started. And, you know, usually we start with who is your target market, but I want to even take a step backwards from that, Anita, and mm -hmm. say, why are you writing this book? You shouldn't just write a book to stand on its own and you have nothing else to go with it. So because a yeah. book draws people into you and your other things that you have to offer. Usually when you have a book, people want more from you, right? This is a starting point for them. So you should have a course that goes with it. You should have consulting, uh, speaking, a product, a service. How does that tie into the book that you're writing? Because they're going to want more from you. They're going to learn to know, like, and trust you by reading this book and having this book. It's that first step. So um, think about when you're starting the book, how is this going to help my business, whether even if you're first starting your business or your brand with that? All right. So um, think about yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, for authors who are getting started, you want to think about your why, right? Your mm -hmm. purpose for writing the book uh, in two ways. So one is your purpose as the author. So write that down. What is my purpose for writing this book for me? Right. So that mm -hmm. could be anything like some people just want to do it for a legacy play. I just want to get it out of my head. I want to share this information with my family, my friends, right. whatever. Others, most of whom we work with, are wanting to write their book to gain some notoriety, visibility, credibility, right, mm -hmm. in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, others want to gain some more business right? That bottom line with a dollar sign that says, I want to get some more paid speaking opportunities, some more clients, uh, those kinds of things, some more sales for other larger, um, higher level uh, products or services that you offer, right? So number one is the purpose of writing the book for you, the author. Secondly, is you want, what's the purpose of writing the book for your reader? We're always keeping in mind who our reader is and what they should get out of it. Your book should change people in some way. What's mm -hmm. the outcome, the takeaway that you want readers to have from reading your book? Think about how you want your book to change people. What should readers think? What should they feel? What should they do when they finish reading your book? Your book sh They shouldn't leave your book the same way they came. They should know something more, feel something differently, know how to do something better. So those two purposes for writing your book, your purpose for you as the author, your purpose for your reader, their takeaway. Yeah. When they close that book, we always say, what action do you want them to take? Right. And even if it's a fiction book now, like Wes, he, we made him a best-selling author and he has a bunch of books that are out and his may be that you know, buy more of my books, right? If your main thing is you're an author or you're a fiction author, it's buy more of my books. But you right. should have them want to do something. And that leaves the question of having a call to action in your book. We always say have a call to action. So think about that. And that's kind of what Anita is saying, like, what is that purpose? Um, they may want to go build something. They may want to improve their life. They may want to... Um, you know, take actions. You've taught them whether it's uh, we did Amy Lawrence's book, which is food prep, right? And Amy wants you to start having a healthier lifestyle. She wants you to start using the skills and strategies that she taught you to lose weight and eat healthier, make your life uh, more streamlined when you're preparing your food. So what are the actions? And then hers ties into she's got a great membership that if you want more right. from her, you can join her membership, right? So um, we always say if you have something specific, like a membership or something like that, or more books, then that needs to be brought up in the book as well. And that ties yeah. into also creating the content. 
And that is about thinking about the end and the beginning. So think Stephen Covey, right? Begin with the end in mind. Think about the end result you want your book project to have at the beginning, right? And that's what we do with this wonderful uh, engagement we have called VIP Day. We get mm -hmm. with our authors and we talk through this strategy. This is all about the strategy of becoming an author, the strategy mm -hmm. of writing your book, because it's bigger than just the book. You want something more than just book sales at mm -hmm. the end of the book. Book sales are great. We all want to sell a ton of books and you mm -hmm. should and you will. But what else? Right. So I ask authors often, what would you rather have a twenty five dollar mm -hmm. book sale or a two hundred and fifty dollar an hour client mm -hmm. or a twenty five thousand dollar contract? You get to choose. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. one. It's not even a twenty five dollar book sale. It's two dollar and fifty cent royalty really is what they're exactly. Getting. Right. Exactly. Oh. But we want to think bigger than just the book. We want to think about that mm -hmm. ultimate end game. OK. And that's what we cover are one of the things we cover in VIP day. But before you can even get to, <laughs> you know, that $25,000 thing or whatever the big thing is you're selling at the end, you need to have a couple of other things um, structured, right? As part of your book. And of course, one of them we've talked about already is knowing who, one, who your target audience is. And then two, knowing the why. The why for you as the author yeah. and the why takeaway for your reader. One of the other super important things you must have to make your book successful is some content. You can't publish mm -hmm. blank pages. <laughs> there needs to be some words on the pages, right? So content is extremely important. Content is that sort of raw manuscript in the beginning. We call it a mm -hmm. manuscript before we call it a book. It's the words. It's there's structure there. There are stories there. And a lot of new authors get stuck with how do I organize my content? Like, where do I get the words from? Do I just pull it out of my head? Um, and then how do I make it engaging for my ideal reader? And so in VIP day, Melanie and I cover a lot when it comes to the content. One of the things that we work through with authors is helping them what we call mine your business, mine your business. You already have content somewhere. Mm -hmm. You have it somewhere, right, Melanie? Talk about some of the places where our authors typically find content. We've worked with many of them and they've come to the book writing table with some and then others we've had to sort of direct them on here's where you can find what you already have. Absolutely. Repurposing is such a huge way to write your book and get content. So we like to do an inventory. When we work with you one-on-one -on -one, um, and during VIP day, we do this individually, but you today can make a list and go through and say, do I have any speeches that I've done? Where are those? Um, have I written blog posts that would fit into the book that I'm wanting to do? Is there content in my newsletter that I've done? Is there sales material? Have I done any videos um, that I've put out on YouTube? Or is there anything on my social media that can be repurposed? And when you do that inventory of everything, you would be surprised how much you have. We had an author that had done over a hundred speeches and they were all different. It was the president of the NFL team, the Houston Texans. And he's like, oh yeah, I have all these speeches I've done. And we looked at each other like, holy cow, you probably have a book just right there. So just doing that inventory and seeing what you have. And we're all about not reinventing the wheel, right? You already have a message that you're telling. You already have something in your head. And I'm sure that you have some of this content somewhere. So why not let's pull all that together and start to organize some of that and see where that fits in. So, um, but then a lot of times authors are like, okay, I have all this content. I have no idea how to organize it, no idea where to put it. And that's where we come in and we're going to walk you through some of this today of making the book structure and then deciding where that fits in. It's almost like your closet, right? You're organizing your closet. You're going to put all your shirts are going to go over here. All your pants are mm -hmm. going to go over there. Um, and then you might even, if you do it like these uh, organizing ladies, you're like, okay, now I'm going to do it. Now that I have all the pants here, I'm going to organize them the back color, right? All my blue jeans are going to go here. And you're going to do the same thing with the book. 
So, um, and that's what the beauty of doing VIP day is and that we're going to walk you through more about how to create this structure. Yeah, absolutely. Melanie likens it to closet organization. I liken it to putting a puzzle together. Mm -hmm. So you've got these pieces all over the place. So my mom loves putting puzzles together and uh, she's a genius at it with, you know, the thousand and five thousand piece puzzles. Um, and so what we do with you with VIP Day, imagine that your newsletter um articles, your social media long form, you know, the longer form posts that you might have. You've written some articles, you have blog posts, you have speeches, PowerPoint presentations. You've got a ton of stuff, right? That you've already created. Those are the pieces to the puzzle. In VIP day, we work with you uh, to sort of structure it. So there's an approach to putting together a puzzle. So here's a little insight for those of you who don't know. You kind of put around, put the border around it first, right? You see mm -hmm. those little border pieces, you put those together. And we take those pieces that you already have and we structure a framework for you. So imagine that the framework, let's think of it kind of like your table of contents. And it has the borders, which would be perhaps your chapters, mm -hmm. those main points that you want to cover in your book, those overarching, you know, key points that you want to have. And then we take some more of your content, some more puzzle pieces, and we work with you to create the stories. There should be stories in each of those chapter uh, titles, right? Those chapter focuses. And mm -hmm. so we talk through and work through the stories, you know, uh, in VIP day. And all the while, we're creating content. We're actually recording this, right? Our VIP day is recorded so that you're creating content. And when we leave there, you actually have a bucket full of content that you've already created, which is a great head start for your book. And then, you know, during that time, as she said, you're creating your framework and you're putting it into the places that it's supposed to be. So you're walking away um, at the end of the day and you go, oh my gosh, my book is partially written and done. And that's what we want you to do um, when you're doing that. And sometimes you just need someone to hold your hand, um, which we get, and that's what we like to do. Um, but also let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, what else goes into it, Anita? Like you get this, but it's still kind of confusing for someone to do it on their own, right? You know, getting yeah. that structure and that process. Is there um, a system or a methodology that someone should really follow? So they've got this framework in there, but they're still confused. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say for those watching right now, get your pens out again or get your fingers working on your keyboard because there is a way to approach the structure. Right. And this is, mm -hmm. this is what we walk um, authors through in VIP day, but we get much more in depth. And so what we want you to do is think about um, think about your book's theme. Everything mm -hmm. starts with a theme. Right. And so um, you want to think about what the theme of your book is. That's the overarching uh, focus mm -hmm. Uh, of your book. So think about any movie that you've watched. There's one theme. There's not five themes. <laughs> Even the most recent yeah. book you've read, there's one theme. And consider your theme if you're having trouble, uh, mm -hmm. you know, writing down what your theme is. Answer this single question that guaranteed someone's going to ask you when you tell them, I'm writing a book. When you finally get up the gumption to tell people you're writing a book, Type in the chat if you're watching, what's that question that most people will ask you? Hey, Melanie, I'm writing a book. The first question they ask is what? What's your book about? Oh, Tell me what your, your book, book about. Is about. <laughs> what's your book about? Generally, that's the theme of your book, not the plot, not yeah. and then this and then this, and then I teach that, that, and the other. It's generally uh, communicated in one sentence, right? My theme is about how to help people sell more effectively, how to help entrepreneurs be more effective in their sales process, something like that, right? Okay, my now. book is about my journey to discover, you know, how strong I am against the odds, whatever, right? So one theme typically communicated in one sentence, maybe two, that's the starting point for the structure of your book. 
Okay, let's dive in. Wait, before you go into well, okay. before you go into the next thing, I'm going to give a little more information on that because, you know, Anita really hones into that a little more on a VIP day. And if you noticed, I, I would say, you know, when authors call our company and they want to work with us, and I always ask that question, tell me what your book is about. And I never get one or two sentences. I get five, 10 minutes about what the book is about. And so we want to hone it down into you know, that one sentence, because when you have your book title or a description, you need to be able to say it in one or two sentences. So we mm -hmm. use a formula and the formula is this book is for, right, for this person, whether it's, um, let's say it's a book about weight loss. This is for a person who's struggling with weight loss and the problem, right, which is they, they've tried everything maybe to lose weight. And the solution is this. So it's the person it's for, the problem it's solving and the benefit of the solution, right? So maybe five easy steps to lose 10 pounds in, in a month, you know? So it's, that's kind of the formula. So we want you to think about who it's for, the, the problem it's solving and the benefits and the solution that you're giving is in that. And so when someone says that to you, you can answer that question in not, five minutes of explanation, but in that two or three sentences or one sentence like Anita yeah. gave. Okay. I'm ready for, for next, next step, Anita. No, I, I love that Melanie, because it leaves them kind of hanging a little bit. Like you're not giving them the whole plot of the mm -hmm. book, like your whole 12 step pro process, right? You're giving them a little snippet, just a little tidbit to make them want some more. Right. And that works at the beginning of your book project, right? For those people who are super excited for you that you're writing a book, but it also works as you move through the process. And certainly once your right. book is done, you're still going to be answering that question. So what's your book about with that one sentence? And, and as we go through the process, the publishing process, you will refine that and it'll become juicier and juicier as yeah. you share your book project with other people. So mm -hmm. your theme, very central, very much the starting point of your, um, your framework when you're doing this, this uh, mm -hmm. framework structure. The next thing you want to think about if we talk about the puzzle pieces and the structure and the chapters is to consider the questions people ask you, right? All the time. Mm -hmm. People are always asking you questions about your life. If you're writing a memoir, if you are a, a service provider, they're asking you questions about how do you do this and how do you do that? Make a list of those common questions that mm -hmm. people ask you. You know, you can probably come up with a dozen off the top of your head. And these are probably also found in podcast interviews you've done, um, you know, some of your blog posts or social media posts, right? You're answering those questions. So don't only list the questions, start there, but also drop in a paragraph of what you're typical answer is, right? So for example, Melanie mentioned um, Amy Lawrence, uh, who wrote The Power of Food Prep. She got questions all the time about, well, how do I, you know, uh, save and store uh, the meatloaf that I cooked? You know, I want to make sure that my family eats healthy. And what are some of the, uh, you know, techniques for not only preparing large amounts of food so that I don't have to cook every day or waste food, but how do I store these, you know, these, mm -hmm. these leftovers, for example. And so she's answering questions like that. People ask her all the time, all different kinds of questions. So think about the questions people ask you commonly, make a list, and then also go back and answer those questions. So um, we call this the 10 by 10 by three. And so come up with, so this is a challenge for you. Set your timer literally for not even five minutes. And I bet you can think of your frequently asked questions. And if you are a business owner or you have a website, you probably have your FAQs on your website, right? So come up with those frequently asked questions. And as Anita said, you want to come up with the answer, the typical answer that you give. But then, so the 10 most frequently asked questions, but then the three is come up with three stories that illustrate the answer. 
It might be a client that you had. It might be even someone else that you know. Um, it might be a celebrity or somebody that is an influencer that you can use as an example. It doesn't have to be your own story. It could be somebody else's story that you're sharing that you heard that you can put in there. So now all of a sudden you have the question, you have the answer, but you have the stories that illustrate this. So that's the 10 frequently asked questions. Then the other 10 is the should ask questions. If they mm. knew what you knew, this is what they really should be asking me. So let's say it's like real estate. Um, you know, how do I buy my first home? And, um, you know, as a, as a rental property, and I'll be saying, well, what you should be asking me is how can I finance 10 homes by buying my first home, right? Um, that how I can leverage that to do that because they, they have expertise and they know that you couldn't just buy one home, you could buy five homes with the amount of money that you're, you have available to put down. So it's the frequently asked questions, the should ask questions, which means if they knew what I knew, this is what they really should be asking me. The answer to that and stories to go with that, that illustrate it. Yeah, I love that. That is very, that's already a lot of meaty content right there. You're going mm -hmm. to expand all of this, but remember right now we're doing framework, structure, for your book. Okay. So those are great starts. Another point of um, finding uh, or developing content for your book is to make a list of the topics and subjects that you speak about regularly, right? Again, you've given presentations, whether they are virtual or in person. And so make a list of the topics and you probably have those in your computer, your topics. And if it's a speech that you've written out or your top five points that you speak from, get those things and pull them together. Here again, we're mining our business. We're mining for content uh, that already exists. So in those presentations, you have your top points. You have uh, probably some stories connected to each of those, right? To give examples mm -hmm. to your audiences. Um, and then you may have a call to action in each of those presentations, which is really important. And we make sure to uh, encourage you to include a call to action in your book. There's a way to do it. And we talk in depth about it uh, in VIP day uh, because you don't want your book to, to be super salesy, but you want to be able to, um, in a very uh, appropriate way, to guide your readers to do the next thing that you want them to do. And so you can take the content from your presentations um, and use that as content for your book. And so I want you to imagine, I mean, we're giving you all of this information right now and you're taking notes, I'm hoping, um, for you to take action and do these things that we're talking about. But if you want someone to hold your hand and have the experience with Anita and I, for a full day, imagine working with us for a full day nonstop, and we're really deep diving into your information. Not nonstop, Melanie, not nonstop. <laughs> we, we do take a few a little breaks, breaks here and there. Yeah, <laughs> we do take a few breaks. Um, but if you're interested in that, Jen's going to put up the link to the landing page, but it's um, uh, igniteyourbestseller.com forward slash VIP. We're going to continue to go on and give you some training, but I want you to take a look at the landing page and know if you are interested in working with us one-on-one -on -one, that we're offering that for you today, um, because we know it can be overwhelming. We know it can be confusing. We know it, you get stuck and it's so hard to get stuck. So, um, go ahead, Anita, go ahead. So I will say along the lines of VIP day is that one of the greatest benefits of working with us for VIP day is truly the accountability. Like you can sit here and tell yourself, I'm going to do this. I'm going to jump on it. Like as soon as I sleep in late on January 1st, and then I wake up, I'm going to start, I'm going to make my list. I'm going to talk about my theme and all this. There's nothing like the accountability of just sitting down and doing it with us, right. Mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that you get the theme, right you pull the content from where it belongs. You mm -hmm. make the list of questions and write out the answers and talk out the stories. Like we're there to guide you through all of this. And we haven't even gotten to the true meat of it. I mean, there's so much more in VIP day, yeah. but this is just the start. And sometimes people get, oftentimes people get stuck at the start. So the accountability that Melanie and I offer you for VIP day is priceless, truly 
priceless because by the time <laughs> VIP day is over, you're done with the hard part, really the structure, the story, you know where to plug in everything. And mm -hmm. so it's truly a value to work with us. We are, have done this for dozens and dozens of authors. It's the, it's the fresh start, the jump start that so many authors need just to get things going um, with developing their manuscript that they can then take for, further with uh, Elite Online Publishing to get it published. So take a yeah. look at igniteyourbestseller.com slash VIP. And hopefully this offer is for you. So as we continue, as you think about it, and hopefully you say yes to us, keep in mind that we can't do a million VIP days. We have space for about eight, I think it is. So you want to jump on this offer as soon as possible. But we'll continue with information about um, developing some content. Mm -hmm. One of my faves, one of my favorite approaches, and this is great for service providers especially, um, because we have an approach to the way we do things, and you probably do as well. So I want you to think about what your process, your system, your approach, your methodology, right? If you have clients or customers that you take through a, a process to get to an end result, think about what that is. You probably have steps in your process. You might even call it something. It's my mm -hmm. XYZ approach, right? Think about what that approach is, and that could be several chapters. Each chapter, you're explaining each step of the process, or it could be mm -hmm. a single section or one chapter that has subsections in it. So mm -hmm. here again, you may be thinking about, here's my six-step approach. And with each of those things you have, maybe with each step, you have not only what it is, the what mm -hmm. for your reader, customer, client, you yep. might also talk about the how, and you might also talk about the results, but don't forget the story, the case story, how you helped someone go from zero to 60, <laughs> you know, in two months, how you took a customer or a client from nothing to the result you promise in yeah. X amount of time and talk about the result. So it's a case story. Think about the case mm -hmm. study. Here's how they came to me. Here's what their challenge was. Here's what we looked at in terms of the information that we had. This is the process we took them through. This is the result. So that's content in and of itself. Your approach, methodology, system, process, write that down, whatever it is, name it, and then that can be content for your book. Now, this is great for um, uh, businesses that have an existing structure process mm -hmm. already, but it's even great for you if you don't have one, because here's your opportunity to develop it. And a book is a great way, like a jumping off point to get that system developed. Right, Melanie? Absolutely. And I want to dive into a little bit about actually writing and being disciplined um, to do this. So, so many people struggle. It's like, okay, Anita and Melanie, you gave me all these great ideas. You gave me all this stuff, but <laughs> now I have to take action and actually implement it and do it. And that's where so many of us stop. So how do we discipline ourselves? How do we create this timeline? And um, so the first question is you have to say, what works best for you and your schedule? When are you in the best mindset? Is it first thing when you wake up in the morning and you've had your cup of coffee or your matcha tea or your smoothie <laughs> and you're ready to go or your green drink and you're in that zone and it's quiet in your house and you can write? Is that the best time for you? Or is it at the end of the day before you go to bed? Or is it in the middle of the day when you're taking a break that you are really focused? Um, so find that time that works best for you. And I know busy people like to do things fast, right? We're, we're, ADD, all of us, like, and we want all this immediate stuff happening to us. So why we say it's best to set like a timer, right? So do time blocking, shut that door, put your phone on airplane mode so you don't have any distractions. Um, and, you know, and set so much time to do it each each way. So everyone does it a little different. Um, one of the things that we say about VIP day is we are famous for compressing time. Right. So, so many busy people will be like, wow, I can get five to 10,000 words written in one day. 
and my book is all structured and it's all put together in one day. So that's one of the advantages of VIP day versus saying, oh my gosh, how many days am I going to have to do this over and over again? So even if you could discipline yourself and use some of the tools that we've given you today and you can do it on your own, you can set a whole day aside. Um, so we've had authors do that. Um, so think about how can you compress time so then it's not so overwhelming to you. It's not such a big deal. And that's what we do on VIP day because we're there to hold your hand and give you that direction and that guidance. So you're not on your own going, well, I don't know, should it be this? Should it be that? Um, <laughs> so think about trying to compress time, but find out what is the best time for you, best times of days for you. And then set yourself a goal within those times. So if you're gonna set an hour, two hours, three hours, that you say, this is what I'm going to get accomplished. So you're not just in there writing blindly. You say, I'm going to work on my 10 frequently asked questions. I'm going to work on questions one, two, and three today. I'm going to come up with those stories that are going to go in there. So have a goal that you're going to do each time that you walk in. Um, even set a framework of goals so you know, here is my schedule of how I'm going to write. And you know, it's not a crime if you don't follow the schedule. You get in there and you said, I was going to work on chapter three today and I'm just not feeling it. But man, chapter six is really speaking me today. That's where my head is. So work on that. Yeah. So, um, you know, you have to give yourself some creative freedom. Good points, Melanie. And I also like Wes's point. He talks about um, he likes to write between 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. Nice and quiet. Love that, Wes. You go. I'm not, I'm not the I'm not the late night writer. I'm an early morning person. So to Melanie's point, you really have to find your time of day. Um, so there's a couple of things I would say uh, to continue that that thought, which is one, first, you've got to make the commitment to do it. OK, because no matter mm -hmm. what else. If you're not committed to it, finishing the first draft, mm -hmm. like that should be first on your mind. I've got to finish my first draft. OK, meaning that I've got content in all of the parts, right? All mm -hmm. of the chapters that I've outlined. OK, that's like the end. Right. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get content in all of those areas. So that's finishing mm -hmm. your first draft. You've made a commitment to do that. Then you want to make sure that, yes, you make the commitment of time. Find your time of day. Find your mm. time of week. Every day is not the same, you know, in every week. But, you know, if you're not a night person like Wes, you're a morning person like Anita, mm -hmm. you don't want to try to force yourself to write at midnight. You may want to write at 6 a.m. instead. So find your time of day, but also find your place. I think your writing cave, what I call it, is really important. Find your place. If you are the kind of person who needs quiet, like I do, Get yourself a space in your house, close the door, tell your family to leave you alone for the next hour or two because you're writing. Have them respect that. You've got to respect your writing time as if it is the most important appointment of that day. You wouldn't cancel a doctor's appointment unless you had to. You wouldn't, you know, put off your kids thing. You know, it's an mm -hmm. important appointment. You've got to get it done. So your writing cave is just as important in your space. If you like activity mm -hmm. and noise, find your favorite coffee shop or restaurant and go do it there. So those things are important as well. And to Melanie's point, have some goals. I'm going to write chapter two. Or I'm going to fill in some blanks in chapter eight. Um, I'm going to give you a little insight that we share with authors in VIP day. So shh. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. This is super inside baseball, but I'm going to let you know in on it since you're tuning in today. Um, our goal for authors is for you to get to 30,000 words in your first draft. OK, now you're going to leave VIP day with at least 5000 words. Right. By the time we finish with your framework. Right. That's one of the deliverables after VIP day is that we'll give you that structure. Right. With mm -hmm. about 5000 words, sometimes more. I mean, we've had. Uh, some authors have up to 10 or 15,000 words with their framework. Okay, so let's just say you leave VIP day and by the time you get our uh, framework, you've got 5,000 words. You only need 25,000 more words to get to 30,000. So my suggestion to you is to time yourself for your writing sessions. Give yourself at least two hours and see mm -hmm. how many words you can crank out. OK, yeah. so if we're trying to get to 30,000 words and it takes you two hours to write a thousand words. Right. 
So you need 30 writing sessions to get to 30,000 words. If you can write 2,000 words in a writing session, you only need 15 writing sessions to get to 30,000 words. So it's up to you on how quickly you write or where you can pull that content from that is relevant to each of those sections and chapters, because you probably already have 2,000 words in a speech, 1,000 words mm -hmm. in an article, that kind of thing. Just plug it in. Now you know where it fits, like those puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. Just put it in the right place. We're trying to get to the end, okay? So here's how you're structuring your framework using the content you already have. You've got your theme, you've got your titles, you've got your chapters. Now you have your writing time, your writing space, and now you're pulling it all together to get us 30,000 words uh, of a first draft that now our team can work with you on that. So I want to go back um, and talk about what Wes is talking about, Our one of our best-selling authors that's here in the chat. And then I see Robert has a question. Do you help writers with short stories? Yes, we do. We help them with short stories as well. So Wes brought up the point that everyone can write a book. And it's so true. Um, and it starts really with mindset that you have to get over doubt, right? So that's the key. And it's almost, that's what you have to start with really. If we backtrack and go through this whole thing, the first thing you have to have is a good positive mindset, put the doubt out of the, out the window. And, and I want to say doubt is very, very normal. No matter how successful you are, we've had extremely successful multimillionaires work with us and they're worried their book is going to suck. I mean, that's what they, I just want to make sure my book's not terrible. I want to make sure. Is I mean, it any good, not... Anita? Is it any good? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I love it. Actually, I love it when they get to that point. I'm, I'm not yeah. even going to lie because <laughs> well, they, they care. Really I mean, it's showing me that you really, really care that this yeah. book is awesome and that what we have helped you, the point that we've helped you get to is that you're so invested in this book project, you want it to be the absolute best. You'd be surprised how many people come just a little tentative to the book writing table. But when authors get to the point where they're like, come on, Anita, is it really good? <laughs> and I yeah. tell them they still don't believe me half the time, but I wouldn't lie to you, right? And I, we want to make sure that your book is so amazing that it hits authors, your ideal reader, mm -hmm. uh, in the way that you intend. And that's what we're reading for when we go through the editing process and that yeah. kind of thing. And that's also what we're thinking about in VIP day. So, yeah. And being vulnerable, right? You have to be vulnerable to tell those stories. It's kind of like behind the curtain at Wizard of Oz, right? You have to see that. And I see Robert has a couple questions. Let me just go back and, and cause some people don't know exactly what Elite Online Publishing does. So we do a lot of things. We're complete uh, service, concierge service, white glove, um, hold your hand the whole way, starting with the VIP day if you need your content done. But people come to us at all phases of their book, whether they have a finished manuscript that's ready to go, or they just have an idea in their head. We do publish um, nonfiction, fiction. We publish children's books. We um, do short stories. We've done journals. We've done workbooks. So we do pretty much everything. Um, but we also publish on all formats. So we do audiobooks, hardback books, uh, paperback books, ebooks. We also publish NFT books. So we just have an author that did Wall Street Journal USA Today bestseller with us. Um, his book is coming out also as an NFT. And we've uh, put that with utility, which means NFT is a non-fungible token that we put that with utility. So he's adding courses and videos and things like that with the book when you buy it as an NFT. And we're launching some of our own books as an NFT coming up, which is going to be part of our bonus today. We have How to Write Your Story of Success, which has uh, a bunch of questions in it. I think over 40 questions for prompts to make it easy. So we're telling you how do you get your content out. So one of the things in the bonus today is our book that has 40 questions that you can answer that will help you get content and get your brain and your wheel spinning. And then with the NFT that we're offering is also two of our courses, which is both of our, um, our writing course 
um, which is the book writing fast pass and the bestseller solutions course, which is the book marketing course that's coming with that. So our NFT, we're putting both of those things with it that you can get today when you sign up for VIP day, you're going to get both of those writing courses. You're going to get the writing course to help hold your hand. It has mindset things that we're talking about here, how to have that great mindset. A lot of the things that Anita has talked about as well. Um, and that's part of the bonus when you sign up today and it's just a thousand dollar deposit. Um, and normally we sell our VIP day for 12,000, but we're offering it today for just 6,000. So we do everything. We do book marketing and we guarantee that our authors will become number one bestsellers, whether it's on Amazon or Wall Street Journal. So we have marketing as Wes tells you that he needed marketing help for his book. Um, and we're always on top of the innovation, what's new and what's happening. And we have all this AI that's available now. Um, artificial intelligence that we're starting to utilize for our authors. So 2023 is going to be a really exciting year. When you sign up for us with our VIP day, we're going to be instituting some of that for our new authors as well. So I hope that answered your question, Robert. Robert, real quick also to just piggyback on what Melanie said is that although mm -hmm. Elite does offer those different uh, genres, right? We do publish in several different genres. We will say that VIP Day specifically, though, is designed for our nonfiction authors. So those are the memoirists, those who are writing how-to, self-help, subject matter exploration, those actual real-life things, right? So for our fiction mm -hmm. and children's books and poems and all those, that's a, a different a different uh, process. But with VIP Day, we specifically focus on our nonfiction authors. Right. And I like, Robert, you said, you know, write what you know, right? And, um, and that's so important because when you write a book, the result is you are now perceived as an expert and an authority in that field. If you notice, I mean, I, uh, as I said, I owned a TV station, a uh, part owner of a TV station. We were all news when we started out. So I was on the air and I was vice president of the company. And when we invited people onto our newscast, and if you even look today, almost a hundred percent, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the people that are guests on newscast have a book right? Because that sets them up that they are an expert in authority in what they're talking about. They've taken all their knowledge and put it all together. And it's just been for, as long as books have been around, people perceive you as an authority when you write a book on a subject. So it's very important to write about what you know. And then let's talk about the uses of the book real quick, because we address this in the marketing course that's part of our author to offer today that you're going to get when you sign up for VIP Day. We're going to talk about how you market your book. And, you know, again, we mentioned earlier, it's not about the $2.50 royalty that you're going to get. It's who can you send that book to that could be a potential client for you, right? Um, I love telling the story that someone sent a book to, one of our authors sent a book to a potential client. The client put it on their nightstand because they intended to read it before they went to bed. They never read the book. They never opened the book, but the book sat there. He saw it every night. He saw it every morning. And eventually it was about eight months later, he called the author and he said, you know, I've been looking at your book for about eight months now. He said, I'm just going to go ahead and hire you because I know you have what I want. And if I keep looking at your book and it keeps telling me that they didn't even open the book. So that got him a $10,000 client. And I also want to say, I'm going to tell the story about Grant Cardone. So Grant Cardone, the story is, how did your, what was the biggest result you got from a client from one of your books, from your book? He said, someone called him who we didn't know, who had read his book and said, listen, I want to book you to speak to my group. Uh, money's no object. How much do you charge? And he said, $100,000. So he booked him. He got a $100,000 speaking gig. But then while he was there, he got five clients that resulted in about seven figures. So think about that versus the $2.50 royalty of sending of selling your book, 
but he even sold the book. He didn't even know this person. They bought the book probably on Amazon that he did make the $2.50, but then it turned into a seven figure deal for him um, because of that. So that's what I want you to think about when you're writing a nonfiction book and sharing your knowledge with someone. That's the kind of result that you want. So when we say, what doors do you want open for your book? And I love Anita talks about when we work with you one-on-one, -on -one, like, who is the client that you would like to get with that book? Who is the person, the exact person that you're writing this book for? You may say, oh, I'm writing this book. My target audience is, you know, 25 to 55 year olds. And, oh, it's probably an entrepreneur and it might be male or female. No, no, no. Who is the exact person? We give them a name. It might even be somebody you already know that you're like, I have been trying to get this person's business. I'm writing this for this person. And if I give it to this person, I know that they will buy my products or services. And then when you yeah. write for that one person, everybody else that's in that demographic will relate to it as well. Yeah, there are millions of people in your ideal reader profile, but you've got to profile mm -hmm. them. So we, you may call them John or Jessica or whomever. It could either be a client you've been uh, seeking or mm -hmm. it could be someone who you've actually worked with or are currently working with. It's like, if I had 20 more like this or 100 more clients like Jessica, it would mm -hmm. be awesome. So write to Jessica, right? And right. so we actually profile who that ideal reader is. We come up with an, an avatar, essentially. Mm -hmm. What about Jessica makes her your ideal client slash ideal reader? Mm -hmm right? Well, she's this, this, and this, and she's got the money to pay me and she needs my service and she's ready to go, but she doesn't know these things. And so that's what I'm going to share in my book, right? So this is all right. strategy. We've talked about structure, the structure mm -hmm. that we help you formulate in VIP day. We've talked about the stories, right? You're going to mine your existing content for story. And here we're talking about strategy, we're talking about the end game, your ultimate goal, uh -huh. what you really want to get out of this tag of author of, right? You're now right. author of whatever the title of your book is. What's your strategy? We want to work with you in VIP day before you even have your manuscript uh -huh. complete to talk about what the strategy is, because... The strategy definitely involves your content. We talked about mm -hmm. having some calls to action included in your content. We have a strategy to help you do that. We've talked about, um, and I don't know if we've even talked about it really, utilizing um, some of the marketing strategies that we share in our marketing roadmap with you when you sign on for publishing um, to help you start talking about that book in a strategic way during the publishing process. You don't want to wait till the book's in hand before you start right. telling people and talking about it. We help you um, think through how you can roll out your communication to mm -hmm. your audiences before the book is even done. So this is all strategic stuff. What is it that you really want ultimately? Do you want to be like a Grant Cardone and get those big five and six figure speaker honorariums? Well, let's think about that in the beginning and how can we develop and create a book that gets you there as your end result? Let's think about who the people are you need to reach out to? What are the words you need to say? What's the mm -hmm. call to action you need to include in your book? That's the strategy we really help you work uh, work on during VIP day. So not only do we do that personally with you, but the course you're going to get with that backs all that up and you have that information in our marketing course that you're going to get. All right, Robert, you have another great question about um, who that you should have an agent. So let's just go through this real quick because this is important. You know, uh, there's traditional publishing and there is self-publishing, which is what we do for our authors. So traditional publishing, we work with traditional publishers because they're not marketers, right? They hire us to make their authors bestsellers. We worked with several of them this year alone um, have reached out to us because they don't do the marketing for their authors. So they've uh, reached out to us to make them a bestseller and market their book and come up with some of these strategies that we've talked about today. So traditional publisher, yes, you need an agent. 
So again, that takes time. We're all about compressing time, getting your book out there, working for you, making royalties, making those business deals sooner as opposed to later. Um, shopping for an agent is time consuming to find the right agent and you have to put a proposal together for them. Then once you find that agent, then they have to put a proposal together. They'll work with you to do that. They're going to take uh, a fee and they're going to present it to uh, traditional publishers. Um, that usually takes, that whole process usually takes about a year. And then once you find a traditional publisher, they will pay you some money, but sometimes they pay you, you know, if you're not well known, they may not pay you anything. Um, or they may pay you $5,000. We had a person we worked with who was already a New York Times bestseller. They gave her $35,000 and no money to market her book. And she spent all of that and more to market her book. Um, and it, and they were so antiquated. I hate to say this, but the traditional publishers are very, very antiquated compared to what we do. Um, and there were things that we thought that they should easily be able to do, like get you in multiple categories on Amazon, and they can only do two categories. We have done like 22 categories. Um, but that being said, by the time the traditional publisher gets your manuscript, it's at least a year for them to publish. So that's two years that have gone by, right, before your book is out. So when you work with us, like we use Donna Peters, who published with us, I think it was last year, within six months of doing VIP Day, her book became a reality within six months. So think of yeah. the money that she made in that whole time um, and how her book has been working for her. Even before the book was launched, we start the marketing campaign that she has generated so much money and gotten so much uh, momentum from her book during that whole time period that you're missing out with traditional publishers. The other thing is the you don't have your intellectual property, right? The traditional publisher now is really part owner with there. And I, the author that we worked with, Laura Langmeyer, she was so frustrated with her traditional publisher mm -hmm. because so many things she wanted done, they just told her no. I would like my cover change to have this on it. No, we're not doing that anymore. The cover's done. Um, can you launch it in paperback? No, we're not doing a paperback. We've decided we don't want to do a paperback for you. They're in control. So think of Taylor Swift, who had to re-record her whole first album because she didn't own her intellectual property. She had to deal with that um, recording company. It's the same thing. So when you work with Elite... You own everything. You're in complete control. I always say it's kind of like building a house. We're your general contractor. We're building the house the way you want it built, and you just come and move in, right? We're building it for you. We're not going to live the house or own part of the house. It's not a rental house. Um, it's your house. So it's very important in these times to own your intellectual property and have control over it. So that's kind of the difference of those two things when you work with us. And again, um, this bonus is a huge opportunity. You're getting our book writing course. You're getting our marketing course. You're getting an NFT. If you don't know what an NFT is, that this is new and innovative, that you're going to be in the front line of this. Your children are going to go, you own an NFT? Holy cow. <laughs> you're going to just be so cool that you own an NFT, um, that we're offering that as well. And then Anita, talk about the importance of beta readers because Anita is offering this as a bonus to walk you through all the beta readers during this process. Have you ever been to a supermarket or a farmer's market and you're sort of walking around and you smell something that smells yummy? Is it sausage? Is it bratwurst? What is it? And you walk past the booth and they say, here, have a sample, right? You're sort of testing something for them, right? You are the sampler and they're asking you, how do you like it? What is the flavor? All of that kind of stuff. Your beta readers are sort of like the, pre the people you're sharing a sample with. So um, it's so important to share uh, what you've created before the big debut, right? We want to know that we're hitting the nail on the head with your manuscript uh, prior to it, you know, prior to showing your baby to the entire world. And so beta readers or test readers are those folks who um, we share the book manuscript with before it goes through the final editing and layout and format uh, functions of publishing. So, um, the reason that that is important is that you want to those other people to help improve your manuscript. So beta mm -hmm. readers typically are um, 
a handful of folks who uh, sort of fit into your ideal reader profile, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not your mama, they're not your spouse, <laughs> um, but they are trusted colleagues, for example, um, who will hold your manuscript in confidence. And again, we have a complete process to do this beta reader um, uh, process. It's not like you just sort of send somebody a PDF and say, hey, read my manuscript and tell me what you think. That's the worst right. way to do beta readers. I'd suggest if that's what you're going to do, don't do it at all. Right. So there's a way to get the most from your beta readers. And that is one of the bonuses as well, which is that I will hold your hand through the entire process. I will help you choose the right beta readers choose the right number of beta readers, make sure that we are engaging with them in a way that they're going to give us feedback that is useful to improve the manuscript. That's the whole point. So that from their feedback, you get a chance to make relevant updates, corrections, mm -hmm. additions, deletions to your manuscript so that it really has the impact on your ideal reader that you intend. So it is super rich. We've talked to <laughs> how many authors have we worked with and they're like, this was so great, this process. Yeah. We should have done it sooner. And my response to them is, it doesn't happen sooner. It happens at the point in the writing and publishing process that it belongs. And that just goes to show you that at Elite, we actually have a process. It, mm -hmm. it, it works so well. We've done it for hundreds and hundreds of authors to great success for each of them. And so that beta reader process is rich. It's super valuable. I mean, some people pay just for that just to be like, hold my hand through this. How do I pick yeah. the right people? What questions do I ask them? What do I do with their feedback? And how does this whole thing work? So that's a bonus with the VIP package. And trust me, you're going to find it extremely valuable. Sometimes authors go into beta reader uh, phase and they've got the, you know, sort of butterflies in their stomach because here's the chance, you know, it's just been me and you or whomever you're working with, <laughs> with your manuscript. who has yeah. been telling you, oh, it's really good. It's great. Right. And you kind of want to believe me, but you don't. You're not quite sure. It's not until you hear that. Wow. This was yeah. awesome from two or three or five other people who just love your manuscript that you really start to believe it. That's the sort of the hump you get over and you're like, oh my gosh, okay, I think it is ready. I think I feel really good about it now. So the beta reader aspect is huge in the publishing process and we take all of our authors through it and they love it. And so, you know, I want to say we are so confident in what we do. We have done, like Anita says, we've done so many of these and we're so confident in the result that you're going to get that we are guaranteeing your result. We are standing by it. We're putting our word behind it. We know you're going to have 100% satisfaction. You are going to get a full book structure. Your book is fully going to be structured outlined and you're going to know what's coming. You're going to know who your target audience is and you're going to get a minimum, minimum of 5,000 words. But I want to say we usually average between eight and 12,000 is usually our pocket, but you're going to get a minimum of 5,000 words. You're going to have that time compressed. You're going to have a clear vision. And we are really standing behind this, that we guarantee it, 100% guarantee that you're going to get these results from us. And you're going to have a great time doing it. We have so much fun during that day. We laugh, we cry, <laughs> a lot of different things happen during that time. Um, but what exactly are you getting? You know, what exactly is VIP day? So you're going to work one-on-one -on -one with Anita and I for the day. You're going to get an author assessment form beforehand that you're going to fill out and answer some questions. Um, and then we're going to have a phone call with you before VIP day to get everything teed up, get the expectations. We're going to get some more information from you during that hour call. And then we're going to have our day. And we do take breaks, but we take really short breaks because it's intense. <laughs> we have so much momentum. But literally, we take like 15 minutes for lunch. We say in the prep, make sure you have your lunch ready to go the day before. Um, we take a few bathroom ba breaks, but it's really fast paced. We record the entire session. So you're going to get a video recording of it. You're also going to get a transcript and audio recording of it as well. So you're going to have that to reflect back on. You're going to get your framework, as we said, which is the table of contents. You're going to get a production calendar. So you know if you continue forward 
right? Working on this process, this is when your book should be finished. So you have this timeline and you see when things are going to happen. So that's part of that accountability, right? That's going to be there. And then you're going to get um, the framework put in together, not just the table of contents, but the content we created put in place of inside that table of contents you're gonna get as well. So that's kind of what the day looks like. You're exhausted afterwards, but you're so grateful and happy and you just feel elated when you get all these assets put in and you know that you've got this huge momentum going for your book. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, VIP day again is is a day. It's a full day. It's intense, mm -hmm. it's a lot. We're right there to hold your hand and to hold you accountable but we don't leave you hanging after VIP day, right? We make sure that when you, when we all leave VIP day, you are clear on who your book is for. Mm -hmm. We make sure that you know the purpose and the goals for your book, the purpose for you and the purpose for your reader. Of course, you know the exact chapters that should be in your book. You have mm -hmm. some stories and where they belong, right? To make sure that the whole book flows well. Um, mm -hmm. You have some strategies, of course, to leverage your book, right? So you're going to generate some leads. You're going to use mm -hmm. that content to increase your credibility and even build your revenue, right? Mm -hmm. um, again, Melanie mentioned that uh, publishing schedule not only lets you know when your, your manuscript should be finished, but it also lets you know what happens after that. And then what happens after that? And at what mm -hmm. point does this happen? And how much time should I allot for this to take place, right? So you've got it laid out in a calendar format for those visual people, especially, mm -hmm. um, so that you can see and make you know plans in your own schedule for when things are happening in your book production process. Um, you've got a realistic writing schedule, right? An idea of mm -hmm. how I should structure my writing time, where I should have my writing cave, what I should expect from those writing sessions, right? So you've got some mm -hmm. guidance on that. And then you always have the support of the elite online publishing team, especially when you take it further with us and allow us the honor to continue the publishing process with you and with your book. So we are here for you. Um, you can always shoot us an email if you have any questions, but we wanna see you succeed. Like VIP day is not the end of things. It's really the yeah. start of something big for you. And we wanna take you all the way through the process. We wanna be your support team uh, to help you reach uh, publishing success. And I wanna say, um, Wes just said, Elite did exactly everything they promised me in their contract. They can be trusted, I'm a pro folks and I don't tolerate any BS but I'm here uh, and I but here I am telling you you get what they promise and contract they are first class they are good people thanks Wes I love yeah, that thanks. that is awesome to hear and um you know I had something else on my mind that I wanted to say as we were talking about this is that we only do a limited amount of these Anita and I do only 8 of these a year that's it only eight, no more, um, because it does take a lot of our time and it's very time consuming and it takes a lot out of us. We decided to only do it on Fridays because when we do it in the middle of the week, we're like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. Are you exhausted? What happened? Yeah, we need the weekend to recover. <laughs> yeah, so we decided we needed the weekend to recover. I think I think we're building our, our muscles more. It's not as uh, as uh, much as it was before. So again, the link is uh, igniteyourbestseller.com slash VIP. So we're only offering eight of these. And um, we're starting the year out strong because we want you to get your book published. We want you to get it started. I always feel for these people that have talked about their books for years and they just are struggling. You know, 90% of the people want to write a book and only I think it's 2% do. So we want mm -hmm. you to be that 2% and we're here to help you and hold your hand and get a great book, a wonderful book, compress time for you. We know you're busy. We know you're overwhelmed with everything. So let's get this done in a fast, easy way. We know you've been dreaming about your book forever, um, but we know it can be hard. We know there can be struggles. So we're here to give you that concierge service, that holding your hand, knowing you have someone that you can lean on. And as Wes says, someone that you can trust, that you know is going to do the job that they are promising to do, and they're going to deliver what they say they're going to do. So this offers normally it's $12,000 and 
and you don't get the bonuses. You don't get the beta readers. You don't get the two book writing courses and the NFT that's with it. So this is really a special, special kick in the butt, New Year's, get it going offer. We want to do this for you um, because we want you to get that book out of your head. We want you to start making money. You know, to us, your success is our success. We want to share in that glory. We want to share in your success. We just love having our authors out there and, um, you know, getting their message. And we know with your book, you change your life, your life changes, but it changes the lives of thousands of other people because your book outlives you. How many times have you bought books? I mean, of people who aren't around anymore, right? There's people that inspire us that, um, Norman Vincent Peale, people still buy his books. I mean, they're going to continue for, decades to keep buying his books. So this is a great way to leave a legacy and to change lives even after you're not here anymore. So think about it that yeah. way too. And and that's part of why I'm in this business. My family's in the insurance business, has been for since I was born. My dad started an insurance company. And I always say, no one's really super excited. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for my auto insurance policy or my homeowner's policy. But when somebody has their book in their hand and they become a number one best-selling author, they are over the moon. Yeah. They just never thought it would be a reality. They are so happy. And it just gives Jen and I and Anita so much joy to see that happen, that we've made them a bestseller. We've changed their life. We know we've helped change their business and the trajectory of what's going to happen to their business and their family. And it's changed the lives, I know, of thousands of other people that are going to get that book and your message in their hand. And you're going to help them with whatever message you have, whether it's, you know, self-help, inspiration, motivation, whether it's learning real estate, whether it's learning to meditate, whether it's learning to heal, whatever that is, it's going to help them. And, and that's part of what we get joy out of doing. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely. I love it changes everything for you, right? You're always going to be yeah. author of whatever your book title is. So we want to help you make that book be something you will always be proud of. You will, you will have zero regrets. I've talked to too many authors who didn't publish with Elite, who published however many years ago, and they're afraid to even tell anybody about their book because they just didn't know the strategies, the tactics, the input that we are sharing with authors in VIP Day. They just kind of thought they could figure it out themselves. And while yeah. writing a book is not brain surgery, <clears throat> it does have a lot of moving parts and you want to mm -hmm. make sure you get it all right. Okay. So one of the things I think a lot of, of new authors are concerned about, mm -hmm. even the ones who are just thinking about VIP day is, is, is it worth it? Right. Is it worth, mm -hmm. you know, an investment of $6,000, even at 50% off of the 12,000 normal price? You know, mm -hmm. is it, you know, am I going to get my money's worth? I'm, I'm concerned about that. Well, we mm -hmm. get that question all the time. And, you know, one mm -hmm. of our responses to that is, well, think about this. How many clients uh, could you get, right? When you have written a high quality, yeah, super engaging, well produced book that you can use strategically as a client getting nagged. Think to yourself about how many clients you can use when how, how many clients you can attract, especially when not just with the book, but also with the strategies that we share with you. As we said, it's bigger than the book. So surely you can get a exponentially more dollar value from the clients you can gain then from the small investment you'll be making in VIP day, right? Mm -hmm. How much is each of those clients mm -hmm. worth to you? Think about that. What is your range of pricing, your lowest price mm -hmm. product or service to the highest? And as an author, you're sharing this information with them in this amazing book. They're going to mm -hmm. say yes to you. Like the client that Melanie mentioned who had the book on the nightstand and just said, you know what? You've written the book about it. Let me just go ahead and work with you. I mean, there's mm -hmm. value there, right? Yeah. How much is a lifetime client worth to you, right? Or, or a repeat client even. Um, right. Think about if you've got X number of clients just from using the book alone. What is that worth to you? You've got to think about that. And then also keep in mind that your book <clears throat> is a marketing tool. And as yeah. such, 
it's also a marketing expense. So you'll be mm -hmm. able to expense that um, in your annual, uh, you know, taxes and bookkeeping. So think about mm -hmm. it as an investment in mm -hmm. your in the future of your 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 book, uh, the future of your business, and also in your own credibility and visibility. It's a marketing uh, tool that you can use forever. Yeah, and you know, if you've been thinking about this. Be like Veronica, stop thinking about it and take action. It's rolling around in your head. And what is that doing to you? You know, when you have something that you haven't done and it just eats at your brain in the back of your brain all the time to get it out of there and have it out. Um, so this is a solution for you to have that stop gnawing at you and having people even tell you, you know, you should write a book. How many times do you get that? Oh my gosh, your story. You should write a book about that. Right. Um, so, so you can say, you know what? I am writing a book about that and I'm doing it. And it's going to happen in 2023. So this offer is only good until January 5th. So it's a limited time offer only for eight people. Cause we only do eight people in 2023. That's it. When eight people are done, we're done. We don't do any more. Um, your book can be from start to finish within six months. It can take, if you really work and follow the process, um, you're going to get a guarantee that your whole structure of your book will be done. You'll know who your target audience is and you'll have a minimum of 5,000 words written. Um, and again, we say minimum 5,000, but we've had anywhere from up to 15,000 in one session. So it just depends mm -hmm. how vulnerable you are and open up with us. Um, so today's the day. Today's the day to decide I'm not going to have that gnawing in my brain anymore. Today's the day I'm going to take that step in 2022 and know that I said I took action in 2022 so I can have my book done in 2023. And I can finally say, and I'm not just an author, but I'm going to be a best-selling author and get my book out of my head. Today's the day. Do it. Take action. Know that you've done it. Feel great about yourself. And then you can tell everybody, yep, my book's getting done. I took the first step. It's going to happen. I'm going to have by the beginning of the first quarter, I'm going to have 5,000 words written. Now is the time to do it. You know, you've been thinking about it. You know, you feel like you're lost. You're not sure where to start. I have stuff I've written down, but it just doesn't make sense. I've got a bunch of stories here, there on a notepads. Now it's time that we can help you and put it all together for you. Hold your hand and make this 2023 your year to be an author. Excellent. We want to work with you. We look forward to working with you in 2023. Remember, January 5th is the deadline to get one of the eight seats for VIP day. And we are excited for you. We'll see you. If you have any questions, you know you can reach out to us. Um, there's an author submission form as well at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Go to the author submission form. You can also set up for an appointment with us if you uh, want to chat with one of our consultants uh, or even with myself. So um, jump on there. Go to EliteOnlinePublishing.com. But if you want to sign up for this, Ignite Your Best Seller dot com slash VIP. And this is limited time. Again, only eight people, 50% discount, get the beta readers, get both of our book writing courses, our book writing course and book marketing course and the NFT. So now's the time to do it. We wish you the happiest, healthiest of new years and, um, and click that ignite your slash VIP. And we're wishing the best and success for 2023. Take care, everybody. See you next time.